Hi, everybody. My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Ian. I'm Jason. And we're the Hunters for our YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We are your family. You guys are our family. And we are making our way through an amazing reading in the book of Hosea, a reading that has to do with all of us in this world that we are in today. Because we are all in captivity. And if you do not believe me, simply pull out your wallet, open up your social security card, and tell me where you're owned at. Tell me what your birth certificate says where you are owned from, who you, who's your owners. Now, for all of us down here, we are still owned by the Corporation of North America, and we were born into slavery. We were born into a system where my mother voluntarily got me into a social security number, which put me into the system, which made me part of this North American beast system. Now, you really can't go around anywhere in the world because it doesn't matter where you go from North America to South America. You may not have a social security card, but you have an identifier. You are part of the system and we are all in captivity. Now, how did we get here? Well, we got here because we, our forefathers, disobeyed the laws, statutes and commandments of our creator. Now, I want to go through a couple of things real quick here. The very first one that I thought was a good verse to go through is this, Deuteronomy 28, 64. Then the Lord will scatter you among all the peoples from one end of the earth to the other, and there you shall serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, wood and stone. Now, we are talking about the, in the end of Deuteronomy, we're talking about the end of the life of Moshe. We're with the, the life of Joshua, and Joshua spent a majority of his time with Moshe. Moshe, when, when Moshe was around, Joshua was always with Moshe. So our creator gets Joshua and all the people over there, and that's Hannah saying hello, everyone. And our creator tells everybody of Joshua's reign, of everybody in his times, look, we're going to go over there. You guys are going to get the land that's filled with milk and honey, the land that your, your fathers did not get because of their disobedience. You guys are going to get it. You're going to be blessed with it comes with blessings and with it comes with curses. Now, this is the thing is it was a rah, rah, rah up until he told them that, yes, everybody is going to become disobedient. Everybody's going to be shipped off. You're all going to go into captivity. That is what the, 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 the talk on the Jordan River was all about when they were having it. Now, Deuteronomy 29.1 says this. These are the words of the covenant which Yahuwah commanded Moshe to make with the sons of Israel in the land of Moab, besides the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. So we know that there is a covenant that was made to us. Now, this is something that most people don't understand, is they do not know or understand that we are all these captives. We are all part of these 10 tribes that never, ever came back. Because if you are out there anywhere and you are starting to call upon the name of our creator and you're starting to obey his laws, statutes, and commandments, you are coming out of captivity. Now, Deuteronomy 29, 14 says this, neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath. So again, he says, neither with you only, right? That's something to understand. If you guys do not believe that all of this was is for you in today's world, in today's time, in the year 2023 and beyond, whenever you guys hear this, listen up. Verse 15. But with him who stands here with this us this day before Yahuwah our God, and also with him who is not here with us today. That is talking about their descendants. That is talking about the offspring. That is talking about the next people that are coming along. Now, this is what it says in 1 Kings eleven thirty one, And then we're going to go back into some cool uh, things that I found. And he said to Jeroboam, the servant of Solomon, take for yourself 10 pieces. For thus says Yahuwah, the God of Israel, behold, I will tear the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give 10 tribes to you. Now, this is what he was talking about. And that is where this verse was coming from right around this time right here. Now, prior to... To actually know, let's take a quick look. What we're going to look at right here from David, and you guys might want to gather around here because I have something you guys haven't seen yet. From David to all of these guys right here, let's take a look at the amount of kings. Sorry about that. That's one of my bad dogs barking it up. Now, from David 
all the way out, right, to Solomon. These were the kings right here. These were the kings of Israel. Now, if you look, these are the kings of Judah, right? And Judah went off into captivity in uh, 586 BC. They were there for 70 years. Now, these are the kings of Israel, and every single one of them were wicked. So from the verse we just read, Jeroboam, he reigned from 933 to 911 BC. Then we go all the way down through every one of these. And as these kings were happening, these prophets were brought to light. They were brought out and they were told what to say. And every single one of these prophets talked about the destruction of the, all these guys going into captivity. So here we are. We're going to read into the book of Hosea. That's it, Jade. You got this. I just wanted you guys to see this huge list of kings that we have right here. Now, we're going back into the book of Hosea, and we're going, we're using the book of Yah's scriptures right here. This is a free download. It is absolutely uh, free. Um, there's also an apocrypha, and we don't know if it'll happen today or maybe next week, but we have a, a, a full scriptures with the 66 books and the apocrypha with the 37 that will be a dual column exactly like the Bible um, coming out very, very, very soon. And soon that'll be all combined into one scriptures. And so you will have all of the books, all the apocrypha, everything that you're able to get to. And so those are, again, those are all completely free. Now, today we are on Hosea three. Now Hosea three is extremely short. And so that's why I want to put a little preface of uh, a little bit of the world prior to these days. Okay. Verse three, chapter three, then Yahuwah said to me, Go again, love a woman loved by a friend and an adulteress, according to the love of Yahuwah. For the children of Yisrael, though they are turning to other mighty ones and love their raisin cakes. Anyone have a shot at what is, what is, what is he talking about? What is this prophecy? What is our creator telling Hosea to do? Basically, Hosea gets to be what Yahuwah feels. He gets to be what Yahuwah feels, how he gets treated like you have... An adulteress, right? And if you are marrying someone you love, someone and they go and cheat on you, your heart's gonna be broken, right? You're going to be devastated. You're going to be, your entire world's gonna collapse around you, and that's what happens, Jose, right? That's what Yahuwah basically had Jose do, so he could basically write about this and explain what is going on, what happened, and apparently they love the raisin cakes too. Yeah, and so this is—I don't believe this is Gomer. I do not believe this is Gomer. I, I believe this is someone else. This is another one again. Right? Yeah, and because we already talked about Gomer, we already had the kids with Gomer. Now. Verse 2 says this, So I bought her for myself for 15 pieces of silver and a lethic of barley. Okay, so this is, these are, I don't know if that was expensive or if that was cheap, but he bought a woman loved by a friend and an adulteress. So basically, some defiled woman that was already out there, Hosea gets, you go ahead, you go find this defiled woman. First you find defiled Gomer and you have kids with her and she probably cheats on him completely breaks his heart now he has to go and uh love a woman loved by a friend now this doesn't say you have kids with this woman but it says you fall in love you you have love and so yes essentially what hosea is having to do is what yahuwah feels and when we cheat on our creator we are cheating on him by not keeping his laws statutes and commandments now let's uh, let's let's go back actually let's go back real quick because i want to i want to go over this one of the, um, how did, how did they, um, let's see, let's go right here. Let's go in first Kings eleven thirty three. 33. We're trying to figure out why these guys went into captivity. Now we know why they went into captivity. It's easy to say that they were disobedient and that they, they were very bad people, but these are some of the exact reasons. Uh, first Kings eleven thirty three 33 says this because they have forsaken me and worshiped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians. And have not walked in my ways to do what is right in my eyes and keep my statutes and my judgments, as did his father David. Now, who is Ashtaroth? Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a god. It's a do god. you know who it is, though? It's, it's Nimrod. Ishtar. It's the wife. And actually, Ashtaroth is not, is not, is, it's actually the wife of, uh, yeah, it's Ishtar. It's the wife of Nimrod. And so, for everybody who does not know, Ashtaroth has become Ishtar. Right? It's Easter. It's Easter. So when you are celebrating Easter, you are, you are by default 
worshiping the God of the Sidonians. So that means if you are celebrating Easter right now, you are still doing what your forefathers did, the same things that they did that got them cast into judgment. Now, here's something interesting as well. The kingdom is split. When the kingdom is split, what are the three names for the northern tribes? Anyone? I have to guess here. Uh, Ephraim, the house of Israel. Uh, what would be the third one? Let's see if you can get it. Anyone else? Shomron? No. What are the what are the northern kingdoms called? Don't cheat, Cade. We have that. What do we have? Um, What's the northern? We got Ephraim for sure, and the house of Israel. Okay. Okay. What else? Who, who's one of the main stars? Uh, who's that? Jeroboam. The house of Joseph, right? Oh. So we have the house of Nor We have the house of Israel, the house of Joseph, and the house of uh, the Ephraim. Okay. Now, why is Ephraim? Why is he listed in this and not Manasseh? Manasseh was the firstborn. Uh, because Ephraim was the more powerful. He was blessed by Yaakov when they were kids. See, this is something very interesting when it comes down to genealogy. Is that even though the firstborn is very, very important, there have been many times where the firstborn didn't get didn't get what they were. And this is the case of Ephraim and Manasseh because Manasseh was the firstborn. Ephraim was the one that ended up with the blessings as far as this goes. Okay, now the two southern tribes, what are the names of them, gentlemen? Uh, Benjamin and Judah. Yeah, House of Judah, House of Benjamin, and that, that is where we're going. Now, the north was warned because Yah's covenant continued breaking. The covenant that was given to Adam, then Noah, then Abraham, okay. and finally written down through Moshe. They were taken in captivity in Assyria around 722 B.C. Now, let's go back to our reading. I want to throw that out there. Now, um, verse 3, and I said to her, you are to remain with me many days. You are not to whore, nor become any man's. And so I will. I shall also be towards you. So these are interesting things, right? Normally you don't have to. You don't have a wife or a girlfriend, and you say, okay, um, you got. You can't whore anymore. You're not to go out with any man. You're not to go with my best friend. You need to sit right here. Don't go anywhere because we know you have a past. Um, history that you are uh, you you have not been a good person. Okay, anyone any thoughts on any of this on Hosea's new girlfriend? I mean, he's he's having a rough time at this point. We have the first wife now, this one, and uh, it, he just he just had a rough time with the marriage. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, last two verses, and the last one is extremely important. Four for many days, the children of Israel are to remain without sovereign and without prince. And without slaughtering, without pillar, and without shoulder garment or house idols. Now, do you guys have a real sovereign? Do you guys have a real prince? You guys, it, the world you guys are in today, right now. I would like say a physical prince, not like not like Messiah. Are you look? Do you have a real sovereign, the one that that we are looking for, or do we have outsiders inside of captivity that is our king? Well, we have, we have presidents, and we yeah. have people in power. We have all of those people in power, all those, but we don't have a slaughtering place, right? We we don't have any of that. We don't have um, our real sovereign. We don't have a king that is our king. Our king is on his way. Our king is Messiah Yahushua, Jesus the Christ, as many, many, many call him. That is our king. That is who is going to be leading us out of this mess. Now, verse 5 and the final verse where we want to go in this, this is... Um, this is where you guys need to understand. This is the this is a future prophecy verse right here. Afterward, the children of Yisrael shall return. Okay? It's a future prophecy because the house of Yisrael has not returned. There has never been 12 tribes assimilated all together since that the 12 tribes were removed and separated. It has not happened. So this is where this is future prophecy. Afterward, the children of Yisrael shall return. And seek Yahuwah, their Elohim, and Dawid, their sovereign, and revere Yahuwah and his goodness in the latter days. Now, where it says, and David, their sovereign, Dawid's gone. He's, He's dead. About, He's a, who is it talking about? Yeah, Ye Yehoshua. Yeah, it's talking about Messiah Yehoshua, right? So this is what is talking about what we have to look forward to, guys. The return of our king. The return of our, our Dawid, their sovereign, is going to be our King Messiah Yahushua, Jesus the Christ. He is going to come out and he is going to reign for us and make all of this right. He's going to extract us. The messengers of Yahuwah are going to get us out of our captivity and they're going to walk us back across the oceans, back to the land of Yisrael, to a land where we can be united as a family in our Creator. But the only people who will be on this trip 
are who, gentlemen? Uh, the people who are keeping the commands and believing Yehoshua. Yeah, the people that are keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. And they are found where, gentlemen? Uh, who, everywhere. In the Torah, oh, okay. right? And the Torah consists of what, gentlemen? Uh, the law, the first half of the Bible. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It's a little morning, it's a little early here, right, guys? <laughs> All right, so um, anyone else have anything else to bring to this or bring to anyone out there that, that is trying to find their identity? Um, look for the future because we will be returning. It's not going to, and you never know when it's going to be. But if you are putting it off because you think you have time, you shouldn't put it off because you're going to be uh, sitting there saying, I can do it later, and it's going to show up at your doorstep and you're not going to be ready. Yeah, absolutely. Messiah says, like a thief in the night, he will return. You, you, you just need to keep watch. All of us need to keep watch. Keeping watch is keeping the appointed times, keeping his feasts, keeping his holy days, keeping in, in line with the Torah. That is the way of the future. That is the way of our family that will be joining us, that you guys, hopefully out there, hopefully all of us will be joining together at some point in the near future. And if we don't, there will be no flesh left left uh, alive, which is very, very clear what's going on in the world right now. So guys, thank you very, very much. We hope that you guys have a wonderful day. We hope that you guys, this is clicking for some of you guys out there and it's doing something for some of you guys. We love you. Have a wonderful day. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.